everyone. And welcome. Yes, my name is Arafire, and welcome back to something a bit different. I still haven't worked out a name for the series yet. I guess it's called Why I Think, but I've got to come up with something a bit better than that. But you might recall I did a video on this recently talking about Megatron and how I felt he was the most important Transformers character of all. Without Megatron, there would be no Transformers. Do check it out in the link just above my head. But today I want to talk about who I think the strongest Transformer is. Now, I wanted to do a top five on this, but I thought, let's just talk about who I think the strongest Transformer is. And I think, I believe, that that is Grimlock. Of all of them, pound for pound. Now, yes, it's easy to say that the biggest Transformer is the strongest Transformer. And really, by de facto, Unicron would be the strongest Transformer of all, because how do you compete on a planetary scale? I would argue that if Grimlock was of a planetary scale, that he would be the strongest Transformer. It's still that unbridled strength, that raw power that cannot be matched of a relative scale, pound for pound. So here is why I think Grimlock is the strongest Transformers character. Now, what do you mean by strength, I hear you ask? Well, that's a fair question. Mostly I am talking about raw muscle strength and power, but strength comes in a magnitude of forms and I'm still gonna touch on that. I am gonna still liken that to Grimlock and how I think he's the strongest character in other ways rather than being a sheer brute. But to look at the strength element, to look at why I think Grimlock is the strongest physically from a mass moving muscular sense is the fact that if you look at his accolades, you look at his involvement in Transformers, there is spades of it to support why he is so revered and feared for the role he's in. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to start with G1 for this one, because as we know from the Generation 1 cartoon, the Autobots created the Dinobots on Earth with basic primitive dinosaur bones lying around that they turned into an alt mode. Now, I would like to think, whilst that was fine for the pretext and the context of the cartoon, I prefer to think of Grimlock's background as from Cybertron, that he was always there even before the war. The Dinobots were effectively a mercenary team for hire. They were Dinobots first, Autobots second, and that's always kind of been their MO. You would see like these muscular images, these muscle tanks and vehicles just lying around, still there to be a heavy demolitions team that would go out on odd jobs. They like conflict, they like war, even really before the war happened, or certainly before the war left Cybertron. So Grimlock always had that strength to be his own independent leader of a splinter cell unit. It was always Dinobots ahead of Autobots, as it always has been. I did think what was really nice in the recent Beast Wars IEW comic is that you had a hint for Beast Wars Dinobot to be named after the great history of the Dinobots as a race of Cybertronians. And I thought that was quite telling. And in that passage, you see someone who is more or less resembling Grimlock, that the lineage of the Dinobots carries on and is almost just as big, if not bigger, than the Autobots and the Decepticons. There is a separate faction of them all to which Beast Wars Dinobot is taking his name as a respect to those before, again, showing strength in other forms. As I say, I prefer to think of Grimlock as always being on Cybertron, along with the rest of the Dinobots. And it's been hinted in IDW comics that there has been fighting pits, gladiatorial pits that Grimlock has been in. Even one passage that Grimlock and Scorponok faced off. On a Marvel scale Scorponok this is, they have faced off in the arena once before, giving a very Spartacus kind of vibe. And this has been touched on in the Fall of Cybertron video games and in other forms of media where you do see this feral-like approach. This was even shown recently in the Earthspark cartoon that without a war, without any conflict, Grimlock still needs to fight and is still winning the fight in whatever form. He is feral. He needs that fighting conflict, a bit similar to what Megatron does. I like Grimlock as a gladiator. I like this fact that he is still looking for the fight and he is very much to be feared be it in contest or combat but as i say strength can be measured in other ways and you look at the marvel comics they were very quick to say 
Without Optimus Prime, we're going to make Grimlock our leader. And strength was measured in a number of ways there. He was a logical choice. He was a ruthless leader who was happy to take the fight to anyone. He wasn't happy to defend and retaliate. He was happy to press the advantage. There was a military mind there, still a brutish mind as well, but the strength shines through and he's willing to leave from the front and take the fight to the Decepticons, to the likes of Scorponok, and to be the opposing force that when IDW comics came around, there was even another passage that Megatron asked Tarn to move Grimlock up the list. Again, this is seeing the threat the Decepticons in any continuity knew of Grimlock and knew they had to deal with him over the Autobots and over Optimus Prime. Even in the context of the G1 cartoon, he was strong. He made a very good presence. There was a couple of times he was more than happy to run at Megatron, more than happy to take a bite out of him or any seeker who would happen to get into the way. And again, he was more loyal to the Dinobots over the Autobots, despite being created by them. There was a healthy respect between Grimlock and Optimus. This was only because in any time that Grimlock had to be subdued or put in his place, Optimus was the only one who could really do it effectively, and it took a lot out of Optimus to do so. Grimlock respected that. There was a degree of humbleness here, as humble as a primitive robot could have been. But he respected, he knows combat, and there again is showing a different kind of strength that Grimlock would know. There's a bigger fight going on and there's someone his equal willing to go out of their way to get him on board. Now in the Secrets Alive comic, which is a brilliant read and I do highly recommend that you read it, and if you haven't read it there will be spoilers, there is an element of a mature Grimlock, kind of with no one left taking the fight to whoever's around, defending the Ark for all it's worth, and going up against Megatron. And whilst this was a bit of a controlled Megatron, this again felt like the titanic battle that it always should have been. Grimlock versus Megatron, the fact that he had to think differently, knew what he had to do. There was an edge of maturity here for what not might have been the G1 cartoon primitiveness, but Grimlock in any continuity has never really been looked at as smart or quick-witted. But in Secrets and Lies, he had to be. He had to be that little bit more than what he was. And that was a really good showing. Again, strength to deal with an out-of-control Megatron, but also strength to know that he had to work differently to take the fight to an out-of-control Megatron, to put his emotion of raw aggression to one side and be a bit more tactical. Even when you look in the Marvel comics in the touching of Generation 2, you would see how Grimlock would really take the fight to Megatron quite brutishly, taking his sword and carving him straight down the middle, which unfortunately met his demise soon after. But there was that kind of killer instinct that was needed at the time in the wake of having no Optimus Prime that Grimlock was more than happy to take the fight to the Decepticons and not just retaliate. In the latter stages of IDW, there was a somberness. There has been a lot riding on Grimlock at this point and how he betrayed his fellow Dinobots, which he never forgave himself for. But there was a degree of regression. He would go within himself for the likes of the scavengers to bring him back out. But even then, there was that feral Grimlock, that Dinobot still existing within, that was unbridled, that was unpredictable. And in fact, throughout all of this, there has been a sense of unpredictability and fear on all sides that how could you contain a wild Dinobot? How could you say, even in a live action movie, Optimus wasn't totally sure that he could mount him into battle, that the Dinobots would reciprocate. And there is that kind of mutual respect there. But these were huge beasts that no one had any degree of a certainty that they would follow any leading other than to themselves. Grimlock has forever been the one inspiring the fear on a pound for pound scale and more than has enough to back it up in terms of unbridled strength and a killer leader instinct. This is why I think Grimlock is the strongest Transformers character. Other continuities of Grimlock have been less favourable, shall we say. There has been Cyberverse, where they had a much more well-spoken, but also still had the tyrannical element to him. Other things such as Animated had lesser need for a brutish Grimlock in it, but there was always the character of strength, the fact that there is this harbinger of death from the good side, 
coming through, the fact that this was something to be feared and it wasn't just a forever mishmash of good against evil. This was destruction on a feral, uncaged scale. And this is something that inspires fear on all sides. How do you contain that? How do you stop it from becoming the beast within? What I always loved about Grimlock was his inner hatred. The fact that he would inspire to want to hurt the likes of Megatron, Shockwave or Scorponot, who really had wronged him or his team. Shockwave and the Dinobots, that history there is very deep, very complicated. And whilst there is a Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster sense, there's almost a sense of father and son of the creation. And it's a very deep one, but one filled with rage. And in the Fall of Cybertron game, we saw what that was like when you had been experimented on and then you are let loose and what havoc you can wreak. But there we go, that is my reason why I think, pound for pound, Grimlock is the strongest Transformers character. But what do you guys think? Are you guys going to go with the likes of a Megatron? Would you say a Devastator? Would it be that mass shifting increases strength? It makes a lot of sense. But as I say, if you put Grimlock on a combiner scale, I think Grimlock would be stronger than a Devastator, a Superion, a whoever. There is real unbridled strength here that we don't always know what Grimlock's limit is, but we know we have seen it and he's not afraid to use it. But thanks for watching. And as always, I will see you on the next one.